Hey guys, it's Alex Rodelitz here, bringing you the Money Haggle podcast once again this week. If you haven't tuned in yet, uh, you can catch up on some of the old episodes, episode 1 and 2, from the past few weeks on the sidebar. Uh, in the past few weeks, I've been talking about budgeting and uh, building your business, some of the fundamentals, and um, haggling. And today, in uh, this is going to be Volume 1, Episode 3. Today, we're going to be talking about how to find your niche, as well as how to build clientele. So, uh, sit back, and let's get started. So, the first thing I want to talk about today is how to find your niche. A niche, in case you, if you guys never heard that word before, you're not really sure what that is. That's kind of like um, the area to which you're going to be selling your items. What if, what category it kind of falls into? So for me, when I was running my business online, if you haven't heard about the business I was uh, running, you could hear a little bit more about it in my first podcast. I was talking about it. Um, I ran an eBay business, and my niche, or my the category that I was selling, all involved antiques. How I really got into that niche was because when I was, I mean, throughout my entire life, really, um, I guess it really started with my dad. He was always into antiques and always had antiques in the house. And I guess from just learning from him, I kind of grew an appreciation of like the items that he had. So as I got older, I kind of really enjoyed history and learning about things that had to do with history and why, you know, certain items were made the way they were, why they looked the way they did, what they were made of and why certain, like if you had like a, a group of people that made a specific item, why that culture made the item, what they used because that's what was found in their areas, things like that, that I paid attention to. And I'm very... um detailed oriented so i pay attention to things like that so as i grew older i kind of had a great appreciation for antiques and um i started going to this antique mall and buying antiques and i talk about this more in my my first podcast so if you're interested in that go back and listen to it because i talk about it a little bit more but um let's just jump into how do you actually find your niche when you um you're first starting out so my first piece of advice for finding your niche would really be choose something you are passionate about. The reason I say this is because when you have something that you love, you pretty much are going to know almost anything about it. If I want to know um, something about everything that there is to know about Demi Lovato, just for instance, I go to the diehard Demi Lovato fan. Right. So if you want to if you are a sneakerhead, you will know everything and you are passionate about sneakers. You know everything there is to know. You know if I show you a pair of sneakers, you know the year it came out, what it's made of, who manufactures it, how much it's selling for, because that's something as a consumer is something that's important to you. And that's the reason why um it's important to pick things that you're passionate about. I had a point that I was going to connect to this one uh, that I was going to mention later on, but I'm going to mention it now just because it's kind of related to this. Um, so just because you're passionate about an area that you want to wind up selling in, a category that is, like your niche when you choose it, uh, you have to separate your love for that category or that niche and remember to turn your knowledge of that niche into something that can be that can bring you money and you never should be buying things because you love them i mentioned in my first podcast like when you go and make uh deals with people it there's no like we are people and we do make connections but it's best to really be um like uh it's best to really be objective when you are trying to make a deal with someone because the more personal, uh, the more um, emotion that you bring into the deal, the more that people might take advantage of it. So my suggestion is really to buy with your, your brain. You don't buy with your heart. So even if you love something that you see, you go into the deal uh, wanting to buy it 
because you're passionate about it. Just like when I would go and buy antiques, I would see something and I would say, wow, I have to have this. Um, I remember for just as an example, I would always see this one helmet that this guy had that this guy was selling at this antique small market thing that I would go to every week. And uh, I always wanted to buy it, but the price was so high, and the guy just never would come down. But I never allowed the guy to see how, uh, to see the emotion that I felt for the item. That I that uh, you know, if he saw it, I feel like he he probably would have took advantage of that and wound up, um, not really like lowering the price. At one point, I didn't. I think I haggled for it, but I I just didn't have enough money on me at one time when I was going to buy it. And I kind of just forgot about it. I never really saw the guy again, so I kind of just slipped out of my hands. But it's best to just really, um, you know, buy things with your brain and really just keep your emotions out of it. Um, another thing that's important that I want to discuss with you guys is uh, when you're trying to figure out what niche is best for you, it's so crucial that you learn everything about your product. And this goes right back to your passion for the product. If you take somebody who's in love with like hiking or something and um they know everything there is to know about like you know like the best walking sticks or something and that's something and that's their niche and that's something that they sell uh, they're going to do very well with it. They're very passionate about it and they know everything about it like I was talking about before. So when you your passion drives your niche, you are so willing to learn everything there is about it because even as a consumer, you are so motivated to know everything about it and get the best deal. When you're a seller, you have to kind of flip that mentality on its head and start looking at it the other way. You have to start looking at almost yourself as a consumer, step back and be like, what as a consumer, what I love about this product, at what price would I buy it for? And if people are as enthusiastic as me to buy it, um, how do I get them to buy this product in regards to like, you know, advertising in regards to uh, if you're selling on eBay, like setting up your descriptions and auction sales and titles and all these things uh, and including that. It's extremely important because that's how that's really the best way um that you you figure out the market and just going back on that point when we when we talk about um learning everything there is to know about the product that also includes pricing and there are some things where the price isn't always um so concrete like as I was just mentioning like a walking stick that might be an item that's a little bit more mass produced so the pricing is kind of standard but like in my field when I was selling antiques the price wasn't so standard but um even if I couldn't find a price, I mentioned this in another video, I think in my first video, uh, I started talking about like I would go on forums, I would take the time out and literally spend, even if it took me an hour to go post up on forums and community boards on Reddit or wherever else it, it took me to, I would uh, post up and try to figure out where the item came from and how much it cost. And, you know, just doing that research because I loved it so much was worth it to me and in in the end it drove such a higher profit and I became more um, of an expert not really an expert but like more um, uh, knowledgeable about my my inventory which is exactly what you have to be as a seller and uh, just going back to the point about um, finding finding a niche uh, one thing that's really important to do if you haven't uh, found a niche is what I what I would do is if I were you and you're not really sure where to start, go on Google, do a Google search, kind of put in things that you're interested in and to, and in a search where you can talk about uh, where you can include terms of selling and things like that. But you could also jump on like I just mentioned before community boards. Reddit forums that specialize in maybe an era that you're you're really interested in. Maybe you're interested in um, you know uh, uh, music uh, guitar picks or you know like crazy guitar picks that are you know like really 
obscene and abstract and uh i don't know things like that just like things that aren't really uh things that maybe there's a, a community behind that people are talking about because they're interested in and when you find this you can kind of post up uh, you can put posts up there and ask people who are obviously just as interested in the topic as you and kind of see uh you know what it would take to kind of get into a business of selling these things some people might be receptive to it depending on what niche you choose other people might not be because to to some people you might choose a niche that's more like a hobby and they might frown upon you know like the things that you sell like i know for instance when i was a few years ago i got into into metal detecting as a hobby and i know i noticed that when i would go on like forums or reddit or something like that some people would post up pictures of the things they found and they would be like old coins from like 1904 as an example or 1825 standing liberty coins i don't know the years i could be getting it wrong so my apologies for any coin collectors who are listening i'm sorry but um they would post these up and they would say like, oh yeah, like I'm going, to, I'm, I sold two of these on, on eBay uh, just so that the guy could like fund his next like ex, uh, expedition to another place and, or buy a new metal detector with, which is, in my eyes is a great cause. You know, it's just, you're uh, reinvesting into your hobby, which I think is a great thing. But to some people, they take that almost as an offense because they, they're so passionate about the field. They're kind of like, you know, you're just supposed to collect these things. You're not supposed to get rid of them. You know, it, that's kind of like apples and oranges when it comes to um, comparing, uh, you know, like what you should do with a field. If you're passionate about a hobby uh, and you want to make money off it and you can, I don't see the the anything wrong with that. Some people may not agree, but I still think it's worth, you know, going into a community uh forum or on reddit and definitely posting up questions about it because somewhere out there someone could even be doing what you're doing and they could give you pointers and i could definitely help you which brings me to another point um which brings me to i guess an unrelated point uh another thing i wanted to talk about I'll, i guess i'll leave off with when it comes to niches um one thing that's really important is that you may have a niche that doesn't really generate a lot of sales. So why it's important to do your research is because you may find a niche that you're extremely passionate about, you know a ton about, um, but it doesn't really make you a lot of money because maybe it's not as popular. And it's you know it's unfortunate that that's the case because you know you might have a niche that's really awesome to you but to other people because they're not buying things that have to do with that niche or they're not there's not that many people that are are um partaking in that niche then it kind of brings your potential to make money down so if that's the case i would say Come up with a few different types of niches that you can really um, really choose from and try to pick the one that seems most, first off, A, most popular. And you could kind of figure that out by um, one way to do this, a great way to do this is if you go into, uh, go on Amazon.com, there's a section, or you just do a Google search, you could look up uh, Amazon's top selling items and they'll give you their top selling items by category and you could actually go into it and figure out which items are really selling the best now i'm not suggesting to sell um those items uh and the reason is because you know you might have people who are like powerhouse sellers who are selling a ton of those items and people when they like when they search their items those are going to be the first ones to show up and they have like a thousand reviews and it's very hard to compete with people like that but what I'm suggesting is you go into a category where it seems like the one the products that are doing best and maybe making more money, which which uh, niches do those fall under? And if you have a niche that you're knowledgeable about in that area, then you could choose a product that you could sell. And um, 
you know, sometimes even like a, like in my case, I had a niche that wouldn't even fall into those categories because those those items are more, uh, I guess you could say retail. I guess like retail sort of items that you can buy just about anywhere. Not all of them, but majority of them. Um, but they all belong to some sort of category. And that's why it's good to really get on there and try to figure out if it's selling or not. And if it's not, pick another niche. So let's talk about how to build some clientele. Because you could find a niche and you could have uh, customers. But if people, you know, customers that are that want to buy from that category... But if you don't have people that, I'm sorry, but if you don't have products that you can sell, then no one's going to buy whatever it is you're trying to push to them. So my first suggestion would be find products that are selling. And as I mentioned earlier, um, on a related topic, the best thing to do if you're going to go with the retail route would be to visit sites like uh, Amazon or eBay and try to see uh, what products are really being sold and are very popular right now? And that's easy to do. You can actually find uh, top, do a Google search or go onto the actual website and there's uh, there's like tabs that show highest sold items and what category they come from. Those are that's usually a good place to start if you're looking for a product that um, that's that's popular that you want to push. And why I say that's a great way to build clientele is because you already know. It's like reverse engineering. You already know that people are buying it, so why wouldn't you, you know, sell in a niche? The only downside to this method is that, or this um, way of going about building a clientele is that there, if other people are doing it, then that means there's going to be a lot of competition. It doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to have a problem selling it, but it might on those air, those sites. You can make your living on other sites. You can open up your own site and, and sell it that way if you're going to go the online business route. Um, but for me, I what I did was I would try to um, build clientele with the actual products I had. So an example was would be, um, I remember my dad's friend, he had this friend who was um, actually an audio guy for these big bands and he would tour with them and he would do like all the audio cutting you know for each concert that he did and he had like these recordings he had all this great stuff in a storage unit and unfortunately this guy he had a lot of bills to pay and he had a lot of medical issues so he was trying to he wanted me to sell stuff for him and I remember he had these um these like backstage sticker passes to all of these bands and shows that he worked and like we're talking like 50 or 100 of these things and i i found on ebay i remember i was doing a like a product search and doing research on how much to sell these things for and there was there was some people who had these things but remember these are like backstage passes so unless you you were like inside the crew or you had won like a contest or something you wouldn't really have these passes they're kind of rare so there wasn't a lot of them being sold, and since they were a little bit rare, remember, just because something's rare doesn't mean people want it, but they were kind of collectible. The reason is because people go to these concerts, a lot of people go to the concerts, and they want a souvenir to kind of re- like be a remembrance or memorial for what, you know, for the the concert that they went to. Maybe not a memorial, I guess that's the wrong word, but you know what I mean, like a, a memento for, for going to those concerts. And um, what I did was I looked up all the prices that these were selling at, and I actually undercut the market by selling them at a fraction lower because I knew there wasn't a lot of them. But my inventory was super high, so I figured why not take those items, uh, sell it at a little bit of a lower price. So it almost seems like I'm taking a loss, but I'd sell them so much faster, and I opened up a market for myself. So even if the market isn't so big in the niche that you're selling in, you could actually widen it up. And let me tell you something. I knew nothing about this niche at all. I know nothing really about, you know, the concerts that some of these concerts that he worked or the passes that went with them, what have you. I was just going off my own research. And I was opening up this market and my clientele flooded in because I knew that music is something, if you look it up, might be, is something that was popular among people. 
and these passes are a way that people use um, keep as a memento and some of them were selling because people like to collect them but there's not a lot of them so I opened up a market at a low price and it flooded it with a ton of people to buy them another way uh, to get people in that I think is really effective is to offer incentives um, me personally I would what I would do to offer an incentive would be like to do deals like in a sale so uh, when I would sell on eBay and there's probably a million and one uh, different ways to do this and I'm, I'll include um, I'll include some some uh, additional readings and things that you guys can take a look at that might help you with this topic if you want to know how to offer incentives to build clientele because this is a really great method so one way just as an example because I like to keep these podcasts a little bit more general just so it opens up discussion for you guys to talk about and learn um, and get more ideas but I you know if you guys are, are curious and want to know how to like more specifics on how to build incentives I'll talk about it, just, you know, send me a request, uh, or send me, um, rather, a uh, comment on, on the video, and I'll, I'll reply to you guys, but, um, how I would do it is to offer incentives, I would, uh, as I said, just as an example, on my eBay page, on any, uh, sale I was, I was, I had up, I would offer, like, free shipping, or if you buy my favorite one, which drove sales up, because it, it would, uh, have people more inclined to buy more product, more inventory, I would, I would say something like, if you buy, like, I, yeah, I'm trying to remember, like, I, I had pieces where they would, things that would, like, go together, like, I had, a, I remember, like, one time I bought these baseball tickets for Hall of Fame games, Hall of Fame baseball games from, like, the 70s and 80s, and again, just like the um, music, uh, passes, right, the backstage passes, that's a collector's item, and people are going to go pick those up and buy them, because that's something that they, that they went to, and they collect them as souvenirs, mementos, so what I did was, I figured, you know, these things on their own, people might buy one, or they might buy many, the best way to get people to buy many, and to build a clientele in that regard, would be to offer incentives, like having them, if they buy, like, two or more, uh, then offer them free shipping or reduce shipping or, you know, combined shipping, whatever it's called, something like that, so that it's a deal where they don't have to pay as much money to buy your products. Um, and that's a, that's a great way to get people in. Once you get them hooked, uh, what's great about this, this method is, um, you're gonna, you're gonna be able to sell these people later on once they're, they're part of your clientele. So just as an example, I remember I had sold, some like world's fair stuff at one point because i you know i like to collect a little bit of the world's fair stuff and i know that people love to collect that it's like a huge item that people like to collect in the antique world and i remember there was this one guy i had stuff and he wasn't really interested in it but once i found something he was interested in i had his his name in my messages and i sent it to him and i said hey i got this this item i think you'd really be interested in it and all of a sudden he he saw it and he's like i'll take it right now and that's another way to, to build uh, clientele, to kind of offer them products that you know they're interested in and to put pro so much product out there within your niche that you're, you're bound to get someone interested in your product and buying from you. Another way to build your niche is um, by networking. So if you become friendly with other people who are sellers, uh, I know some. I know you may think, it's all about competition. Why would you team up with people? Well, sometimes people have so much uh, business that they can't handle it themselves. And this is like we're talking like when you get a little bit bigger and you're really sell. Yeah, you know, people are selling so much product and they just can't handle it themselves. They're just like a one man business or something like that. Um, you might run into somebody. I mean, there's so many different situations, but you might run into somebody where they have. Um, you know, they have customers, but they can't fill their orders, so they might send them to you as, and you kind of, maybe they might require an incentive on their end to take those clientels off their hand. Um, I've done this before. Uh, you know, you throw people some money, and they might give you some clients. And remember, clients are like, are 
you know, sends passive income because if you satisfy them one time and you have them buying something, especially if you have a product that they'll have to come back to you to keep, you know, uh, to keep whatever it is that they're buying alive. Like, let's say they have, um, they buy a Brita water bottle, right? And then you sell Brita filters also, just as an example. And these people also do that. You buy their clients off of them. You have them come to you. And you have them either buy water bottles off you also, if they need it. Or if you they've already bought those water bottles, have them buy the Brita filters when they run out. And just keep, you know, you keep those people kind of on your, on your hook so that you're ready to just keep reaping the benefits from them. And you just keep you know, getting the money every time they need, uh, the product that's, that's renewable. Uh, the last thing I'm going to mention is one last thing that I think is very important that's really overlooked, especially for new business owners, because you're so concerned about, you know, building your inventory, getting, um, getting, you know, like maybe if you're on eBay, like getting your, your shop set up and, uh, maybe you also are concerned about, um, I don't know, like other other costs that might be coming out of your pocket. One huge thing that you should really get involved in is advertising, okay? And it's extremely important also, like if you have a website or you have some sort of Facebook page or it doesn't have to be fancy, it could just be something that just promotes your business in some way if you, you find a way to get your business name out there. I know like one of the first things I did was start a Twitter account. This was like, you know, years ago when Twitter was the thing before like Instagram and like I was putting my name out there and really getting people to check out my products and I would I would set up a, a feed where people would see like the newest products I was putting out each week because I would go to this market each week and buy new antiques and put it out and people would come and, and check it out. And I probably got traffic through there. I got traffic through Facebook and other things like that. Uh, so the more, uh, advertising you do and the more promotion you do, the better off you'll be when it comes to, uh, gaining a huge list of clientele and the more people you reach, the more money in your pocket. So those are really a bunch of different ways that you can, um, build clientele. So just to do a recap of everything we discussed so far in this podcast, uh, we talked about how to build your niche. Again, some of the things you should do are, uh, find something you're passionate about, but also remember that just because you're passionate about something doesn't mean, and you find a niche doesn't mean it's the best niche. So find something that you're also, you're passionate about, but also will make you money, and that people desire that there's a market for. Uh, go on to, if you're not sure how to choose a niche, and you're you're trying, you're still trying to figure out like what you're good at, what you what you can sell. Don't forget, go on to the community forums and boards and talk to people, network, figure out what niche works best for you. And um, when it comes to buying and setting up your inventory and making deals with people, take the emotion out of buying any products. Just because it's your niche and you love it doesn't mean you have to show that emotionally. If you do, when you try to buy things and don't be objective and you're more uh, emotional with your buys, your profits will pay for it back on the topic of how to build clientele just as a recap before we end um remember find products that you can sell more that you find popular products remember there are places like amazon and ebay that you can go on that will help you identify products that are popular that will help build more people because then if you know the products are selling those are the those are the products to put out there because you know someone needs it Open, open the market if there isn't a product uh, that doesn't, if there's a product that doesn't exist that you want, that you've created or that you bought and there's not much of a market for it, open it up and create a flood of people to come in to your shop and buy your product. Offer incentives for people to join or even uh, network with other business owners with and give them incentives to help give you a clientele list so that you can build up the your customers and lastly don't forget advertising is extremely important get your name out there and more people will flood into your stores if you liked what you heard today please click the subscribe button at the bottom of your screen 
add some comments if you liked what you heard you have some questions or you want to get if you uh, want to ask me some more specific questions you can reach me at my email I'm gonna leave it in the description and I'm gonna leave a few extra additional uh, reading materials that might help you in uh, finding your niche and also how to build clientele thank you guys again for listening this is Alex Rondelitz and I hope you enjoyed this Money Haggle podcast. Until next week.